collection of snapshots tonight. Early mail-in ballot returns, which numbers matter, and which just make for excited TV anchor talk. A family photo of the 22 candidates for president in Colorado. The forbidden photo and the new lawsuit to allow you to take a ballot selfie. A milestone for our favorite train. They grow up so fast. Before and after disasters, thanks to a Colorado company. And a child perfectly summarizes how we feel about election season by ramming her head into a toilet. It's news. It's life. It's next. Early mail-in ballot returns are in, and it's tempted to get sucked into the numbers of how many Republicans versus how many Democrats have returned ballots. It's more useful to look at year-over-year -year trends. Spoiler alert, things look good for Colorado's Democrats this year. Here are the numbers. Turnout is way up from this time in 2014, but of course it is. It's a presidential election year. The real story is that Republicans, who held a huge advantage in early ballots in 2014, are now trailing badly. This time in 2014, Republican returns led Democratic ballot returns 46 to 31 percent. This year, Democratic returns make up 42 percent of the total, Republicans 32 percent. And remember, the early voting expert who joined us last week said it's usually a Republican wave followed by a Democratic comeback. Democratic mail-in ballots coming in strong early in Colorado. They could be in very strong shape. We've been getting a steady stream of your questions about ballots, emails, tweets, Facebook messages. Nice to know that everybody's taking their vote so seriously this year. So we took your questions straight to the top. Colorado Secretary of State Wayne Williams stopped by to talk with our Steve Steger. Here with Secretary of State Wayne Williams in the most glorious studio we've ever been in here, the Nine News Mail Room. I mean, this is my first time I've ever been in the Nine News Mail Room. This is pretty exciting. Not many people get back here. Let's get right to some questions people have about their ballots. Uh, number one, which of Colorado's 64 counties still hand count election results? So Jackson County is the only one that hand counts all of the results. We do use a hand count to compare to the counting machines in all of the other 63 counties, however, so there's still a little bit of a hand count going on everywhere. Let's talk about stamps. Uh, we have gotten so many questions from people wondering, is my ballot going to be delivered if I throw it in the mail and forget to put a stamp on it? You know, the easiest way, if you want to throw it someplace, is you throw it into one of the 24-7 ballot drop boxes. Otherwise, put two forever stamps on it, you'll be okay. We do work with the post office to try and ensure every vote is counted, but you want to be assured your vote is received in a timely manner. You don't want it delayed. How often are those ballot boxes emptied? So ballot boxes are emptied based on need. They have to be emptied for the first week at about every 72 hours. We then shift to where it's every day, and then on election day, and perhaps even the day before, counties will be doing it multiple times. The next question from a viewer, if you're moving to a different county now, what do you do? Easiest way is, you t starting today, you can actually go into a voter service and polling center, and so you can actually vote in person in the new county you're moving to. Uh, the other option, you can go to GoVoteColorado.com, update your registration. The ballot will get mailed out to you within a couple days. Can I drop off my ballot for Denver County in a ballot box in a different county? So we obviously prefer you drop it off in the county in which it's issued, but we actually have rules that make it so you can drop it off somewhere else in the state as long as it's to that clerk by 7 o'clock, as long as it's to a clerk by 7 o'clock on election day. Secretary of State Wayne Williams, i got to get back to my other job of sorting mail back here, and I'll let you go. Very good. It looks like you know, there's a lot of empty slots, so you better get to work. Stager, hardest, man, hardest working man in the biz right there. So if you have looked at your ballot, perhaps you noticed that the third-party candidates for president aren't just Libertarian Gary Johnson and Green Party candidate Jill Stein. There is a laundry list of 22 presidential contenders in Colorado. Now, we have heard your calls to cover the third-party candidates. Give them equal time is what you say you want. But do you really want equal time? When you say give all the candidates equal time, what you really mean is give equal time to the major party candidates, plus the third-party candidate that I like, plus maybe one more if I'm feeling charitable. But certainly not all the candidates. Not all 22 presidential candidates on the Colorado ballot. As the argument goes, if they only got equal time, they'd get more equal support. Really? Is that what's standing in the way of socialism and liberation candidate Gloria Estela La Riva? Oh, mentioned her. Gotta mention them all now. Equal time. There's Republican Donald Trump, Democrat Hillary Clinton, Libertarian Gary Johnson, Green Party candidate Jill Stein. We're just starting to get equal up in here. American Constitution candidate Daryl Castle, unaffiliated Evan McMullen, Ryan Allen Scott, Mike Smith, candidate Frank Atwood, no way, that's awesome. 
Uh, it's Frank Underwood. American Delta candidate, Rocky De La Fuente. Prohibition candidate, James Hedges. See you at the Beer Fest. American Party candidate, Tom Hofling. Veterans of America candidate, Chris Nyson. Allison Candy with the Socialist Workers. Emilio Solsic from Socialist USA. The sequel time thing is tiring. Snack break. With nutrition candidate, Rod Silva. Independent American, Kyle Kenley Coptic. Don't run on your initials, Kyle. Kotlikoff for president candidate, Lawrence Kotlikoff. American Solidarity's Michael Morton. Independent people candidate, Joseph Allen Maldonado. I give up. Kind of appropriate, though, because there's one more left. Nonviolent resistance pacifist candidate, Bradford Lytle. This has been equal coverage of campaign 2016. Voters going to vote, campaigns going to campaign, and truth testers going to keep testing the truth in the ads that are on our air. And today, politics guy Brandon Ritterman gets into an ad in favor of making it harder to amend Colorado's Constitution. Amendment 71 would make it harder to put questions on the ballot ever again to change Colorado's Constitution by requiring about a couple thousand signatures to come from each of the 35 state Senate districts in Colorado. It would also make it harder to pass new amendments, requiring a 55% supermajority instead of the simple majority it takes right now. Today, we're going to look at just one claim. The Colorado Constitution is a far different story. It's the easiest in America to amend. If that sounds a bit subjective to you, that's because it is. We're rating this claim debatable because it's really just the opinion of the Yes campaign. If you look closely at Colorado, you can find a way to justify that opinion. We do set a lower bar than any other state when it comes to gathering signatures to put a question on the ballot. We require 5% of the number who voted in the last Secretary of State race. Other states use more popular races like governor with higher turnouts or a higher threshold like 10%. But that's not the only way to look at it. If you believe the proof is in the pudding, we should find the state that actually has the most amendments. For that, we fly over to Alabama. They've got 892 amendments to their constitution. For perspective, Colorado's got 152, which is just higher than the national average of 115 amendments. And if you want to find the most ways to amend the constitution, you got to keep flying to Florida. Not only do they have signature petitions and referred measures from the legislature, they have an official Constitution Revision Commission and a Tax and Budget Reform Commission that both meet every 20 years, and Florida voters can call for a constitutional convention at any time to make changes. Bottom line, it is easier to get signatures to vote on constitutional amendments here, but there are other states with a lot more amendments and a lot more ways to pass them than Colorado has. With your Truth Test, I'm Brandon Ritterman. Florida sounds like a good time. If you'd like to check Brandon's research for yourself, you know, media bias, you can find this truth test, the past, past truth test, and all the supporting research on 9news.com. So you know this. You're prohibited from taking a selfie with your completed ballot in Colorado. Perhaps you didn't know it's because of a law from the 1890s. Selfies were not so much of a thing then, but they were worried the people revealing completed ballots could lead to bribery. Denver prosecutors issued a fresh warning about this last week. Now, a first-time voter and a state senator are suing for the right to duck face next to a completed ballot. This act of voting is one of the most sacred rights that we can enjoy here. And if we choose to do that publicly, that, that, uh, that's joined with another one of our rights, and that is a free speech. Senator Owen Hill filed suit against the state today in federal court. He is a plaintiff, along with an 18-year-old named Scott Romano. This is a free speech case. They're arguing that a ballot photo or selfie is a political statement, one that could be more powerful than words in some cases. Based on the number of friends that I have that are like, oh, Scott, how did you vote on this? Or what, what, what should I do with this? Educate me. I think that I should have the right to be able to take a selfie with my ballot and post it on Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram, Twitter. Scott Romano looks like a super informed first time voter, just saying. Senator Hill says many other states have struck down similar laws and haven't reported any problems with voter fraud. And it does look like the state is going to fight this lawsuit. The Secretary of State's office sent out a statement today saying that that anti-ballot selfie law protects the integrity of the election and shields voters from intimidation. Is the A-line working today? You know, the train to the plane. Oh, look, the graphics all special. There's a cat and confetti. Is the train working? Yeah, it is. And that's great news because the A-line is officially six months old. Started last April. Happy half birthday, A-line. We hope you get better with age. The Broncos are kicking off at 630. This came to our attention through the nonstop promotions on 9 News, telling you to tune into Channel 20 for the Broncos-Texans game starting at 530. 
No, they didn't say, watch next, everybody, then flip over to catch the Broncos kickoff at 6.30 on Channel 20. Nope, they just said, hey, forget about next and flip over at 5.30. Did they think of the consequences? Did they? There's a chance ratings go down. Next gets canceled. I'm forced to MC middle school talent shows for a living. Then I move to a cabin in the woods, grow a beard that not even Danielle Grant can love. And she loves beards. Think of the rest of the Next team. All these smart, beautiful people out of work, struggling to eke out careers as professional tweet writers. Just recently, our visual producer Cody had a baby. A baby. Are you really going to switch over to the Broncos game? People, think of the baby. A next viewer is taking both parties behind the woodshed this year. As long as we keep putting those people back in office, we're not going to see any change. When disaster strikes, a Colorado company has a new tool to help rescuers. And our state could use a few more daring drivers to help clear mountain passes come winter. Political discourse in America wrote an open letter to politicians and CC'd us. You're always welcome to do that, by the way. This viewer's note really struck us, so we asked him to share it with you. It's time to put aside partisan nonsense and get down to the hard work of governing. Members of both parties should be well aware by now that many Americans are desperately angry at the political gamesmanship played on both sides of the aisle and are willing to do almost anything to vent their anger. If nothing changes in the next few years to assuage this anger and show the people our government can indeed produce results, then we are in for an even greater outburst from even more divisive groups in the future. Democrats and Republicans alike need to end their juvenile feud and find ways to sit down and work out their differences in an adult and mutually respectful manner which produces real and measurable results. The reality is that not everyone will be completely satisfied with whatever these results may be, but that is only due to the great diversity of needs in our country. I'm old enough to recall a time when even while political opponents were at each other's throats on the floor of the House and Senate, they still found ways to work out strategies which satisfied both parties and progress was made. If it worked then, it can work again. Somebody just needs to take the first step. As long as we continue to elect people who will stick to a single ideology rather than embrace the diversity and, and be willing to reach out to others. As long as we keep putting those people back in office, we're not going to see any change. You can't stand on your beliefs at the expense of everyone else's beliefs. This country is based on diversity and we need to recognize that and appreciate that it's our, it is our diversity that makes us as great as we are. And go Broncos, Jim Cronin did not add. By the way, it's still 15 minutes to kickoff. You can stick with next. We won't leave you hanging. Kickoff is at 6.30 on Channel 20. Sometimes po political commentary is unintentional, and it is still spot on. Like this, from a family featured before on Next. Anna Hannels, the former journalist with the door sign warning off political canvassers. And this is her daughter, Ivy, who recently ran to the door to greet, a, to greet a political volunteer just like this. Ivy decided that she'd be showing off her new potty training seat. Her mom was amused. So were we. Apparently, the young guy working the neighborhood for the Democrats was not so pleased. Next, when people are in it deep, technology from Colorado will help rescuers determine just how deep. And then, the moment when a sports journalist is free to be a sports fan. Yeah! Yeah! You know, it didn't just start snowing in Colorado after the advent of the modern snowplow. Imagine back in the day. And this is how they did it old school. So cool. These photos are from the early 1900s. Now, clearly, the plows have been upgraded, but the need for some daring drivers remains. And CDOT is looking to hire 100 plow drivers before winter. They're opening statewide. The highest need is in places like Silverton and Vail Pass. You're outside, and it's, you know, all different 
you know, corners of the state and it's beautiful. Uh, you know, you're out there working in nature. I think that's really cool. I think a lot of people really enjoy that versus being in a, in a building. Now, you need to have the right licenses. You need to know how to operate heavy machinery. You would be on call a lot. The shifts are 12 on, 12 off. Job pays about $18 an hour. Clearly, it's enticing because CDOT says those job openings are competitive each and every year. We have snow coming to the high country. We certainly could use a little moisture here in the Denver metro area, but still on the watch for Denver's first official snowfall for the season. I'm meteorologist Kathy Sabin, and it turned out to be a beautiful fall day. Highs near 80 in October. You're probably wondering how much longer will this last? Well, at least another week. Temperatures have been trending above average. The average this time of year is 62. We're still close to 70 in downtown Denver this hour. Hopefully an omen of things to come tonight as our Broncos take the field fans very excited a beautiful forecast for kickoff with temperatures in the low 70s at about 6:30, mid 60s by about 8 30 this evening we're watching moisture move in from the southwest and that'll translate to a little bit of rain and snow over the higher terrain but lower elevations you're going to wake up to cloud cover tomorrow maybe some drizzle early on and then that's it afternoon sun means another day with temperatures above average high clouds tonight 46 degrees not bad tomorrow temperatures above average again even with that weather system crossing the state and then look at this we've got 80 degrees back in the forecast on Thursday ahead of what will be another beautiful weekend for us so remember when you're out and about snapping those sunrise and sunset pictures send them in and we'll post them right here on 9 news Kathy thanks a company in Colorado is watching flooding around the world with a new type of program that's helping disaster response teams coordinate their work we told you about Digital Globe before. That company is based up in Westminster. It uses satellites to capture before and after images of disaster zones, like the recent Hurricane Matthew in Haiti. And now it's using something it calls a water algorithm. It analyzes water patterns on land. Water patterns on land. Think flooding. And it can also use those satellites to determine the depth of that water. From the algorithm, we hope that they can make a more informed decision, right? When, when a disaster occurs and you want to send people out in the field to conduct some disaster response activity, uh, whether it's bringing food and water to those that have been impacted or helping to save lives, uh, this is the kind of information that can readily inform those decision processes. And Digital Globe makes its images public. It invites regular folks to help analyze the before and after images immediately following a disaster. You know, more hands makes for light work. We are about to see a new side of a familiar face in the next family after this. There's no cheering in the press box. It's the rule for sports journalists. And it's why some sports journalists won't openly root for the teams that they have to cover. But make no mistake, the vast majority are sports fans. Take our Broncos guy, Mike Kliss, who grew up a Cubs fan. His son was recording when Mike watched his Cubs make their first World Series since 1945. Here we go. Say that. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. First time in my lifetime. I'm still living and the Cubs are in the World Series. <laughs> That's great stuff. Very, very happy for Cliss. Your feedback now, doubting Thomas via email, not watching the NFL this year, quit supporting them when Kaepernick start his national anthem protest. I don't know, Thomas, do we want employers cracking down anytime somebody makes a controversial yet thoughtful statement? I would vote no on that one. Diane writes, I'd continue to watch next even if it overlapped with the Broncos game. I wouldn't, Diane. The game starts at 6.30 over on Channel 20. To answer the question from earlier, those hot Broncos kicks, they belong to Steve Steger. He'll be back next time. So will I. Take care.